The floor is yours. Okay. Um, welcome everyone to the Coaching Australia Healy COVID-19 vaccination webinar. My name is Tara and this is Will. Hello everybody, my name is William um, and we will be leading the webinars uh, today. Um, I would also like to introduce um, Alison Smith and Riley um, who will help answer the questions uh, during the webinar today and we will love to welcome all of you and um, hope you enjoy today's webinar. I would love to acknowledge the transition constraining of the land that we I am speaking from. We and we also acknowledge the transition constraints on the land where each of you are living. We pay respects to the First Nations who might be joining us today. I would like to let you know all this is being recorded and it will be available for you to watch later. Thank you, Tara. So today's webinar is about the COVID-19 vaccination. We will talk about um, getting the vaccine and um, we will try to answer your questions about the vaccine. Um, our three main sections that we will be covering in the webinar today will be uh, what do we know about COVID-19? What um, we know about the COVID-19 vaccine program and what will happen at the appointment you get the vaccine. Uh, there will be time to answer your questions along the way and we will have a 10 minute break um, in middle of the webinar. COVID-19 spreads very easily and quickly. It is everywhere in the world. More than 109 million people have COVID-19. 28,000 people in, in Australia. This has disturbed This is my slide, Tara, oh, sorry. Sorry. Um, all good. Um, so to stop COVID-19 from spreading, uh, we have all been washing our hands, um, wearing masks, and social distancing. People who come back from overseas must quarantine in a hotel for 14 days. A COVID-19 vaccine has been created. This vaccine will stop COVID-19 uh, from spreading and stop people from getting sick. Uh, two injections are needed for the vaccine to work. It's free for all people in Australia. It's not for people under 18-year-old. COVID-19 vaccines are safe to use and everyone can choose if they want to have the vaccine or not. The COVID-19 vaccination has been tested many times and it's safe for most people over the age of 18. You should check with your doctor if you react to medication, have COVID-19, take blood thinners, not sure about the vaccine. The COVID-19 vaccine uh, may give people some mild side effects, but this does not happen to everyone. 
after having the vaccine, some people might have a red mark on their arm, a mild fever, a headache, or feel sick. If you feel unwell after the vaccine, you should call your doctor. And there is more number of people get serious side effects. This is very rare. If you feel you cannot breathe, fall down or faint, your heart beats very fast, you should call triple zero right away. Remember, it is your choice to have the vaccine or not. Everyone gets to choose if they want to have the COVID-19 vaccine or not. Um, everyone deserves to have the support they need um, during the um, vaccination or before the vaccination um, and the information when deciding to have it or not. Um, you can change your mind at any time. Do you guys have any more questions? Don't think there are any questions. Some people will get the vaccine first. This is because they get they could get very sick, have jobs to protect other people from getting sick. The people who will get the vaccine first are quarantine and border workers, frontline healthcare workers, aged and disability care residents, and aged and disability care staff. And the phrase one B, adults over 70 years old, health care workers, Aboriginal and Torres Strait people over 55 years old, people 18 to 60, 69 year old who have underlying medical condition. Some examples of underlying uh, medical conditions are um, people who have low immunity system. Um, so some examples of um, low immunity um, come from other health conditions such as heart disease, cancer, uh, diabetes, chronic uh, kidney disease. Um, so um, an example of what low immunity means is, um, so I might have uh, diabetes and Tara is um, Tara, and I may get sicker um, quicker than Tara may because, because I've got um, diabetes, that means I can get sick easier than Tara can. Um, so low immunity means that you're more susceptible to get, you know, the flu or other things um, easier than other people would. Phrase 2A, adult over 50 year old, Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander uh, people eight, 18 to 54 years old. Other high-risk workers, phrase 2B, the rest of the population, anyone from other phrase who have not had the vaccination yet. So where will people get the vaccine? Uh, people in phase 1A are the people who will get the vaccine first. They will get the vaccine at their workplace or a care facility. Um, this means they do not need to go anywhere to get the vaccine. People in next phase will get the vaccine from GP clinics, 
Aboriginal Community Control Health Service Vaccine Clinics, pharmacies, these places should be accessible and there should be accessible communication options. Does anyone have any questions about the information um, we have given to you so far? Um, I can say that. Brooke has a question. Yeah, so with us who have disabilities, do we go in the phase 1B or do we go in the next phase? Um, so uh, different, uh, different people um, will go into different phases. Um, yep. So further into um, this um, presentation, um, we actually have a, a vaccine eligibility checker, so oh. you can actually see um, where you fit in the category, um, and um, it goes personalised to the individual. So um, basically, uh, the most common area, and I saw that you brought up uh, Phase 1B, Riley, um, so that may be an area you'd be eligible to um or yeah one b um but if you want to just make sure um we've got a website link we'll recommend to you at the end of the presentation right, well, thank you are there any other questions before we move on lovely um uh this slide's yours tara thank you you can take with you a friend, family member, or support worker. Your Medicare card plus agent photo ID and the appointment form. A healthcare worker will ask you some questions. You can ask them questions too. They will explain what will happen when they give you your vaccination. At the appointment, the healthcare worker will ask you for your consent uh, to give you the vaccination. Uh, consent means that you agree to do something. So if you decide to give your consent for the vaccine, this means you agree to uh, get your first vaccination injection today get your second vaccine injection in a few weeks time and have your information recorded. Remember, it is your choice to have the vaccine. And if you do not have to agree, um, if you don't want to, and you do not have to get the vaccine on the day, even if you're in the middle of the appointment, you can stop whenever you like. If you consent to having a vaccine, the healthcare worker will give you an injection in your upper arm. You will be asked to wait for 50 minutes to make sure you are okay. If you feel unwell, you are waiting. You should tell the health worker. There are some important things to remember when you go to your appointment. Um, it is okay to feel nervous before getting the vaccine. If you are worried, you can speak to your doctor about any questions you may have about the vaccine. It is your choice to have the vaccine and uh, it is okay to change your mind. Um, and you can always book in to have your vaccine at another date if you don't feel like having it when you're in the appointment itself. Do you have any final questions? Lovely. Um, so 
as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, um, if you are not sure um, when you're able to get the vaccine, you can use the vaccine eligibility checker. Um, so this is a tool made by the Australian government to help people find out um, when they can have the vaccine. You can find this by going to the website www.covid-vaccine.healthdirect.gov.au slash eligibility. This is your webinar will be recorded so you'll be able to watch it again on the Cruising Australia website. You can also sign up to the Advocate Kit e News, find out more about COVID 19 vaccination. Be going to. So, Tara and I would love to say thank you to everybody that came to this webinar today. And um, we appreciate that you have taken time out of your day to come listen to us. Um, and that brings us to the end of the webinar. Thank you so much, Will and Tara, for taking us through that presentation. Um, we have had some questions that have been provided to us by Brooke Canham, who is a peer worker who works for Inclusion Australia. And we might just take the time to go through some of her questions, because these are probably questions that a lot of other people might have. And Alison Smith is here as well. And Alison, you can feel free to jump in um, at any time if you would like to. But some of the questions that we've had uh, are, can I go to work after having the vaccine? So all people, as Will have, has said uh, during the presentation, all people who have the vaccine will be asked to wait for 15 minutes to make sure that they are feeling okay after the vaccine. So this means a healthcare worker can monitor people and answer questions if they don't feel well. After the wait time, if you're feeling well, you can go on with your day. So you can go back to work if you would like to. Another question was about feeling sick after you have the vaccination. So will you feel sick afterwards? Some people have no symptoms at all after they have the vaccine and other people have mild symptoms, as Will and Tara have said. Um, so some people have mild symptoms after they have the vaccination, like a red mark on their arm, or they might have a little bit of a headache or feel a bit sick. Um, if you do feel unwell after you've had the vaccination, you should tell the healthcare worker and they can give you some advice and make sure that you're okay. If you feel unwell after you leave the vaccination centre and if you feel very unwell, you can call your GP or you can call triple zero as well if you feel very unwell. But most that's very rare and most people will not have any side effects or any symptoms. There is a post-vaccination symptom checker for side effects. Uh, it includes when to call triple zero or a GP. So there's some information about that that you can find on Inclusion Australia's website if anybody needs to. Another question from our peer worker from Inclusion was, do I have to change my diet? You don't have to change your diet to have the vaccine or after you've had the vaccine. So you can continue to eat whatever you would normally eat. Are you allowed to do any fitness or heavy, heavy lifting after you've had the vaccination? The healthcare worker giving the vaccination can give you some more advice on heavy lifting. So you should ask them when you get the vaccine. Usually uh, you'll be told not to lift heavy objects immediately after you have the vaccine because your arm might be a little bit sore. Um, and this is to help stop, uh, to help stop any redness or soreness or any bleeding after you have the vaccination. So it's better, better not to lift anything too heavy. Another question was that if I am in phase 1B, can any of my family members get it, get it, get the vaccine as well uh, if you see them all the time? So the answer is only if your family members also meet the phase 1B eligibility themselves. So they can also use the eligibility checker to check if they are in phase 1B. Um, but if they're not in phase 1B, they won't be able to get the vaccine. They have to wait until they're allowed to have the vaccine. 
So the one of the things that has changed is the um, uh, is the definition of one B. This is the one that changes a lot. So one thing that has happened is people who are primary carers of people with disability are able to become part of one B. So um, the, there is a list of people. Uh, I'm not sure whether we've put it up yet, but the the eligibility checker, the information that sits behind that, will change over time. Um, and in the last two weeks, it has changed to include carers of people, uh, including family members who are carers of people with disability, but not all people. So it's usually only one person in the family. But again, if you're not sure, speak with your doctor. Yeah, thank you, Alison. Another question that um, Brooke Canham has had, which is a really good one, is what happens if I'm scared? Will the people who are giving me the injection talk to me about it? The person giving the vaccine will ask you some questions before they give you the vaccine and you can tell them if you feel a bit scared or feel a bit nervous and you can ask them questions as well. You can ask them to explain all about the vaccine. You can ask them to explain possible side effects, where to wait and what to do next, what to do if you don't feel well, anything else you want to know about the vaccine. So they're there to give you information and you can always let them know if you're feeling a bit nervous or scared. And just to remember as well, uh, as Tara and Will have said, you can change your mind. So even if you go to the appointment and you're ready to have the vaccination and then you decide you don't want to have it, you can say no. So you can change your mind at any time. And you can also have someone with you um, if you are scared uh, or someone to help you remember um, all the questions you want to ask. So you could take a family member or a support worker or an advocate um, or somebody else that you feel comfortable with. And we just had another message in the chat, which I'll just read. Um, what about support workers working close to someone? Do they have to have it before working close to me? I wonder, Alison, are you able to give some information about that? So does a support worker, if they work with someone who's in phase 1B, does the support worker also get the vaccine at that time? Uh, I, I think it depends where they're working. If they're working in residential accommodation, they will be offered the vaccine uh, at the same time as the people who live in residential aged care or disability settings um, so that there's some different rules. So they're offered it. No one can be made to have it. So your support worker has the same choice as you. They can choose to have the vaccine or not. So if they work in certain settings or in a hospital on other occasions, they will be offered the vaccine as part of 1A. If they're part of 1B, it might be because they're a primary carer for someone with a disability, um, in which case they can um, choose to get the vaccine. But the support workers um, can't, again, can't be made to have the vaccine and they will have to show that they meet one of the eligibility requirements that we've spoken about previously. Mm -hmm. And Brooke, I can see that you've just had another question in there. So if somebody like yourself is living independently and you have a worker come to your house to help with cooking and cleaning and housework, um, so that, as Alison said, it, it, it is up to them when they get the vaccine and depending on what phase they're in, um, because they're not a staff member of a disability care residence or a, or a disability care setting, they won't be eligible to get the vaccine just yet. Does that help answer your question, Brooke? I don't know, but like if they're working like one to one quite close, like I don't know if they have to have the vaccine to like work as close as possible. Like if you need so, so, yeah. personal care or anything, but like if they like you know just help with like doing your hair or yeah. So shoes. So there's a whole, this is the area that's changing quickly. So the yeah. government put some rules in place and then they've decided as, as some of these questions become um, more prominent. So people are asking these questions now, Brooke. So now they're having to go back and think, should they or should they not? Who, okay. should they, who else should they include? So that, that's changing. So support workers, um, some support workers will qualify, but not everyone will and not everyone will choose to have it. So 
no one can be made to have it, even if they're supporting people with a disability, and even if they're working in some places, they can't be made to have the vaccine at the moment. Oh, cool, thank you, Alison. That's okay. Thank you for those questions, Brooke. And I can see another one in our chat uh, from Zoe. So once you've had the vaccine, do you still need to uh, wear a mask if you can't social distance? That's a really good question. My, my understanding is that you will. So, um, so the, the vaccine, you need two jabs of the vaccine and they're different spacings depending on which, um, which vaccine you get. But you will still need to um, wear a mask and wash your hands and practice social distancing where you can. Um, because not everyone in the community will be vaccinated for probably many, many months, and you won't know whether or not they've got um, COVID or not. So everyone will need to be still following the rules around hand washing, social distancing as far as possible, and wearing masks. Fantastic. So feel, if anybody else has questions, you can feel free to put them, keep putting them in the chat, or you can unmute yourself and, and ask them. But I might read out a couple more. Uh, that we had prepared earlier. So can the flu jab and COVID jab be combined? So they can't be combined. So the COVID vaccination must be given two weeks before or two weeks after you've had your normal flu vaccination. So you need to have a two week break in between having those two vaccinations. When you go to the shops and you scan in, should that be enough uh, rather than scanning into other shops? So if something happened, will the whole centre have to get tested? So this is a question about um, scanning in and signing in to different places. So this is a bit different depending on what state you're in, I think. But the answer that we've got for you for now is that it will take a long time for all people in Australia to get the vaccine so even if you've had the COVID vaccine, social distancing um, from other people, wearing a mask and washing your hands, will you'll still need to do all those things. This is and also- Signing, in, signing in is a local rule as well. So some, some stores and shops make the decision as well as the centres. So the big shopping centres in Victoria, you need to wear a mask and some small places in Victoria won't let you in without a mask either. Yeah, so it's a bit different depending on where you are. But the main thing to remember is even after you've had the vaccine, that we need to make sure that we're still doing all of the COVID safe things that we've been doing. So that might mean wearing a mask or it might mean making sure you wash your hands or social distancing, because it will take a long time before all of Australia is vaccinated. Um, there's another question about which COVID-19 vaccination is better to get. So in Australia, there are two vaccines that have been approved. So that's the Pfizer vaccine or the AstraZeneca vaccine. You don't get to choose which one you get. Uh, it's the one that's available at the time of your jab. They've both been tested and they've, they are both safe uh, to get. Both of the vaccines, you'll need two shots of them. So no matter which one you get, you still have to have two. Um, and you'll get the same brand of vaccine at each appointment. So if at your first appointment you had AstraZeneca, then you'll get that at your second appointment too. Sorry, Raleigh. Yeah. Would well, they have that noted for you? So if you forget what you've had, you can, so for your second jab, they know what you've had? Yes, yeah. they will. Yeah. Okay, cool. So all of the information about your um, vaccination, so your name, um, mm -hmm. which jab you had and which date you had it on, um, yep. will be put into, it's called the Australian Immunisation Record, and there'll be one for everyone in Australia who has the jab, and it will okay. be part of your health record. So you don't have to know which, one, which vaccination um, type you got. Um, the, author, the people who are organising it, the Vaccine Task Force, will know that. And also, okay, so can you also choose the vaccine that you want or is it like... No, 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 no one gets to choose. Everyone in okay. Australia gets to go for a vaccination and they get the vaccine that's on available at the time. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Really good questions. Um, 
There's another question about uh, if you are prepared to have the COVID vaccine and they have one ready for you and you're at the appointment ready to go, are you allowed to pull out? And the answer is yes, everybody can choose and you can change your mind at any time. So even if you go to the appointment and then you decide you want to change your mind at that point, you can. So it's completely up to you and you're allowed to change your mind at any time. And even if you say no, uh, if you say no to having the vaccine at first, but then decide to say yes, that's also okay. So you can go back and have the vaccine at another time. Okay. Sorry, I got a question. Yeah, Tara. What if I'm scared of a needle? If you're scared of a needle, yeah, that's yeah. going to be for a lot of people, um, including myself, are a bit scared of needles. So the best thing to do is to have somebody with you, probably somebody that can support you. So that might be a family member or it might be a support, another supporter to take with you to the appointment. Um, and you should also talk to the person giving you the vaccine and let them know that you're feeling scared of, of needles. And no, some, of my, some of my friends who are scared to have a needle because they have to be under the anesthetic. They had to go under yeah. the injection. Yeah, that's so something. there are so yeah, there are people so people who need sedation and people who need general anaesthetic to actually receive the vaccine will still need to consent. But the arrangements for doing for actually giving them the vaccine haven't been finalised yet. But they are definitely being considered, Tara, and so um, there will be some advice available. So the vaccine program is very, very big in Australia. There's potentially 26 million people, um, less the children, who will receive two jabs all across Australia. So some of the information and decisions they need to make haven't been made yet. So at the moment, they're doing um, people in the primary, the 1A, who are reasonably easy to access because they live in um, they live in accommodation where there's someone there who can help them um, make the decisions, but also uh, help them get ready for the, the vaccination if required. Uh, and also workers, people who are working in the field who can... Um, who in the health district. Yeah, and yeah that's right. But if uh, for, um, the people in 1B, which is a bit more complicated, and people who are very frightened of needles or actually just can't take the needle because, you know, they, they need general anaesthetic or sedation, that's a bit more complicated. So what will happen is that um, the vaccine task force will come up with a way of, of that to be given to the people safely uh, if they consent to have it done. But they haven't done that yet. They're working on it now. Yes, I know. My mum, one of my parents have the injection because she's in the health district. She's doing okay. okay. So uh, there is a question that's been asked also about... Um, uh, how effective the vaccines are and whether or not um, the different versions of vaccines will affect herd immunity and will impact the immunity of Australia overall. Uh, they're very good questions. So I, I think um, it, it's very difficult to answer. The, the Pfizer vaccine and AstraZeneca have both been shown to be very effective, uh, both in the trials that have been done in Australia, but also overseas. So both of these vaccines have been used overseas. Um, you've probably seen in the news some people um, saying there's been some bad responses. There is always a very, very small percentage of people who will respond badly to vaccines. Um, millions and millions of doses, millions and millions of jabs have been given so far. Um, and I think there's been 30 or 40 people who've had very, very bad vaccination responses. So they're monitored. Um, and all of the information is pulled together. So in Australia, there's an organisation called the Therapeutic Goods Association, and it sits in Canberra. And what it does is it looks at all of the people who've been getting the vaccines and all of the research and all of the trials that have been done to date. And it looks at overseas information as well, and then makes sure and monitors whether or not the vaccines are safe to give in Australia. So... Um, it will take some time. I'm not sure about herd immunity. I'm not sure that the studies have been done. But herd immunity is just where you get lots and lots of people, like the vast majority of people in Australia, vaccinated, and um, which is a bit like our childhood vaccination programs. 
so that you don't get so many people with measles and mumps and things like that because they're vaccinated against it. And that's what we're hoping for with, um, with the um, COVID-19 vaccines. Fantastic. And I've just seen another question in the chat uh, from Brooke, which says, has anyone with Down syndrome had the vaccine already? As I'm scared, what could happen to me? And the answer to that is people with Down syndrome have had the vaccine around the world um, because a lot can of people. I, yeah, Tara. Can I? I have Down syndrome. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, you don't yeah. have to feel um, bad. Don't be. I'm going to repeat that. Don't be afraid of getting it. Okay. Because I'm like you, Brooke. I'm about to get mine. Yeah, people with Down syndrome are now in 1B. So all yeah. people with Down syndrome can now get um, can now get the vaccine early. Okay. Yes, I'm going to get it. So if we could buddy up, we can do it together. Oh, but you're a bit far away, aren't you? I'm from Sydney anyway. Yeah, I'm from Perth, so a bit too far. But um, I've got supporters here that who can maybe come with me and hold me down, pin me down. You, you don't want to be pinned down. So there is another question. Can people who have had COVID also have the vaccine? And the answer is yes. So the vaccine that you're given, the medicine, doesn't have any live agents in it. So it doesn't actually have live versions of COVID in the vaccine. So it does mean it's safe for people who have had COVID. And some people won't know whether they've had COVID or not. Fantastic. Were there any other questions that anybody else wanted to ask? Brooke, you have one? Yeah, I was typing it to you. Um, okay. I have one. Is that okay to? Of yeah. course. Yeah. Um, so how long does a vaccine last? Is it an annual jab like the, the flu vax? Uh, I, don't, I don't have any information on that at the moment, but it's an excellent question. Just ask your GP or your doctor. So will we have to have two jabs every year? Plus In future, yeah. Don't know. It's a very good question. I think it's... Um, I think the information about that will start coming out from overseas um, early next year because they'll be able to see whether or not there's another spike in COVID in Europe, um, you know, maybe in the Middle East. Uh, Israel has gone very early. Most of the Israeli population has been vaccinated already. Um, so because they're ahead of us in their vaccination rates, we'll be able to see what happens subsequently. I'll let you know because I've got family in Europe, so I'll find out from London and Amsterdam and Dublin. Excellent. So I can see Brooke's question in the chat and it says, can you still go to TAFE or uni after you have it? Um, and I'll answer that bit first, maybe. Yeah, yeah, you can. If you're feeling well, you absolutely can. Um, and it also says, can I still work in a medical centre if I don't want the jab? And Alison, I, I think the answer to this is, yes, you can still work yeah, I think in a medical centre. My understanding is that there are no rules that um, requiring uh, anyone to have the jab. So it's completely voluntary. So uh, I think just working in a medical centre, if you don't have it, might put you at more risk of getting COVID-19. Uh, COVID so, um, but also... The, what the vaccine does is it stops you making getting so seriously ill. So if you choose not to have it you, and you do get COVID-19, you may end up far more ill than if you'd had the, vac had the vaccine prior. So I, I don't think they, anyone can be forced to have it. Um, and there are no rules around workplaces at the moment. What about allergies? Yep, there are people, um, there are people with allergies and who, who have reactions. So um, there's a list of ingredients. There, is, there are some websites which we will put up as part of this. There, some of them have been included, but we will put some information up on the Inclusion Australia website. So people who have allergies to certain medications need to just check with their doctor before they have the vaccine. Um, 
so there are, I, I'm not sure what the ingredients are in the vaccines, but they are listed. And anyone who's not sure should speak with their doctor. And we've just got a follow-up question um, about, uh, can I still work in a medical centre if I don't want the vaccine? So um, if you work at the front desk and if you, and it sounds like Brooke, you've been told different that it's compulsory to have it in a medical centre. Um, and so you'd like to hear an, an answer. Um, can I answer that question for you, Ali? Yes, uh -huh. you do need your vaccination under the health district. I think it, it may be state specific. I'm, I think you have to check with the state because it might be that um, I, I'm, no one can be kept. It's not a compulsory vaccine, but you yeah. might be required. Um, the organisation you work for might ask you to have it so that you don't get so sick. But yeah. there's, you, speak with them. Plus you can speak to your parents. And your GP. And Raleigh. <laughs> and you speak to Riley as well. I think your GP might know a bit more than me. Um, was there any other final questions that anybody had? Do you have any questions, Mary? No. Um, I did have one question. Um, so what is the... Um, so is there an expected timeline between when... Uh, I guess over 50% of people in Australia have had the vaccine and when should things look up around COVID? Uh, so I don't know that, so I think the work, the time timeframe um, depends very, very much on uh, when the vaccines become available. So um, I do know there's hundreds of thousands of vaccines that have been delivered in Australia, to Australia. And Australia is starting now to manufacture the AstraZeneca through uh, CSL, so it will be made locally. And one of the reasons that uh, the Commonwealth has gone through phasing, so people who are most at risk of, of getting the illness or, or getting um, very, very sick from COVID get priority for the vaccine is because um, we, we're just not going to get 26 or 50 million doses in a very short time frame. So um, it really depends on um, how many, how quickly the vaccine can be made in Australia, but it is ramping up. So production is ramping up and also the number of people who can give it. So it started off in hubs in a small number of hubs, but for medical staff mainly um, and at risk workers, but very, very shortly, I think it's at the end of March, GPs will start um, giving the vaccines as well. So there'll be more vaccine available and more places where you can get vaccinated. And that That's will save that's true, Alison, because I spoke to my GP and they said, yes, they will do that at the end of the month. Yeah, so it'll happen quickly. I think it's been reasonably, you know, slow at the moment as we're waiting for things to happen. But at the end of the month, it gets to go much quicker. But no, I don't know when 50% will be done. Who knows? There's another question in the chat, which is how long does 1B go for? Is it a couple of months? No, 1B, 1B will start around the 22nd of March and anything that after that, you can, if you're in 1B or not, it will keep going until the end. So once, once a particular phase has started, so 1A will continue as long as the vaccination program runs. Um, so it's just, a, it, it's about keeping people out. So it's making sure those at most risk get the vaccine that's available in Australia first. But anyone who get who doesn't get it in 1A, who qualifies for 1A, can get vaccinated at any time now, as soon as there's a va uh, vaccine available for them. And then from the 22nd of March, if that is the date when um, 1B kicks in, then anyone in 1B who qualifies for 1B will be able to get the vaccine after that date. They'll just have to make an appointment with their doctor. Mum already done hers, <laughs> and she's in one B under the health district. That's great. Mm. And there's just another question which we all want to know the answer to. I think when can we start booking an overseas holiday? <laughs> and the the answer Ooh, to that is that the question million no. dollar question. 
yeah, we don't know that yet. We're going to just have to wait and see how the vaccine goes. Hopefully soon. Go. Yeah. The, um, the expectancy of all international, I think, national flights, um, they said, I believe, is, so they gave us a timeline. I think they said even after the vaccine rollout, they said possibly uh, between end of 2021 to mid 2022 was like the expected but this was back way in like mid 2020 this was spoken about um so i don't know things could change yeah i think we're all looking forward to a holiday aren't we yes yeah, sunny one it's sad one yeah well you did. Yep. So if there are no, uh, I think we've got another question. Would we have to wear face masks on aeroplanes just to other states? So just if you're travelling in Australia. Um, I think yes. that you do, Tara? Yes, we do. People with Downs, yes, you must wear a mask on the plane. I think it's true at the moment that anyone on a plane um, has to wear a mask. It's a rule of the airlines. Not in so, the bathroom. It's not yeah. nice to sit right next to a bathroom. Does that answer your question there, Brooke? All good. Um, any other final questions or are we all feeling nice and confident? Just thinking. You're thinking, Brooke? Oh, thinking. As... As we've said earlier as well, if you have any other questions, the best person to talk to is your GP as well. So you can always talk to a GP about any questions or concerns that you have. We might just have another question coming through on the chat. Uh, is there a capacity still at pubs and events? So, um, that means it, is there is there a limit of the amount of people you can have in a pub or at an event? And the answer to that is it's different depending on where you live in Australia. So here in WA, there there is a limit, but it's a very it's a very large limit. And I think in places like Victoria, it would be different. It would be different in Queensland. So it does depend on where you are at the moment. That's it, Riley. Oh. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. And a special thank you to Will, William Ward Boas and Tara Eilif for presenting this webinar. Ellen. It's Ellen. Ellen. Thank you, Tara. Thank you, both of you, for presenting this webinar. Cool. Thank you.